Happy Mother's Day, excursionists, to anyone who bears the title or does the job. Thank you for joining us for our special, but I do want to give a quick trigger warning here. There is brief mention of child abuse in this week's story. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to Into the Night. I'm Nari, your guide on today's excursion down a twisted path. Be careful not to get lost. Be it dark or light, it's easy to lose your way. Are you ready? Then let's begin. Lilacs and Rosewater the face in the mirror was familiar, yet younger than she remembered it. Yes, Catherine McDaniel was right when she'd said, You look just like your mama. There was no mistaking the resemblance between herself and her mother, but Cora never noticed it until today. As a young girl, she believed she didn't look like anyone else in the family. She certainly didn't look like her father, whose dark hair and piercing blue eyes too often accompanied feelings of fear and intimidation. The look on his face when she knew the blows would start was forever burned into her memory. No, she'd been grateful to not look like him. Cora Haskins Clark winced, thinking of far too many childhood memories she'd just as soon forget. Her mother was blonde, like Cora, but she had blue eyes and was several inches shorter in height. Charlotte Haskins wasn't one to yell, and a single disappointed word coming from her mouth was far worse than any beating Andy Haskins could dole out. Long-suffering was probably the best way to describe her mother. Cora, try as she did throughout life, sometimes found herself falling into the same emotional traps that Charlotte Haskins had. She wasn't proud of those lapses. Maybe that's why I don't want to believe I was like you, Mom. Aiden, her brother, was blonde with pea-green eyes. Other than that, his features and temperament were definitely that of their father. Charlotte doted on her only son, showering him with preferential treatment, and that hadn't improved his disposition. It made my life more hellish. But I think in the end, it was Aiden who suffered the most from Mom's favoritism. He never learned how to lose gracefully or how to be kind. So many wrong turns happened in that house, and Aiden died a bitter, unhappy man. Mary, her older sister, was the pretty one of the family. Flowing brown hair with blue bedroom eyes, a petite frame, and a sweet-sounding voice made her the darling of the family. Her temper matched the anger often flowing through the rooms of the small farmhouse where they lived, but no one ever doubted which of the girls in the family was considered the beauty. I was out of place. My hazel eyes looked like no one else's, and I was tall and too young to contribute. When it came to being Mom's favorite, other highly qualified candidates were already ahead of me. There was no sense even trying. Cora brushed her hair and stared at the reflection she had seen thousands of times, but had never noticed before. A simple comment, meant as a compliment, changed the way she would look at herself from this day on. Estranged by distance and a difficult relationship with Aiden, Cora hadn't been close to her mother for years. Had we ever been close? Cora wanted to believe, even if it was only when she was a little girl, that her mother had loved her and protected her. As the youngest child in a volatile household, she needed protection. Surely there were pleasant memories. Visions took her back to when she was young, too young even to attend school, and she remembered quiet, happy days spent at home with her mother. The vegetable garden and flower beds were Charlotte's prized projects on the farm. Cora loved the smell of the earth in the garden and the bright colors of the flowers. Bachelor buttons, mums, and daffodils danced in the warm spring and summer breezes. The large lilac bush that grew just off the back porch was one of Cora's favorites. 
The scent of the bountiful purple blooms forever reminded her of her mother. A sweet pang that came from missing a piece of her childhood stabbed at Cora's heart. I'm not sure I should miss those years at all, but lilacs always take me back. Maybe that's why purple is my favorite color. It reminds me of those beautiful flowers that covered mom's shrub. Another scent wafted its way into her memory as well. The delicate rosewater perfume that was the only cologne her mother ever wore. Cora remembered the gentle comfort of snuggling into her mother's embrace as a small girl, while the smell of roses enveloped her. Yes, for such a fragile scent, it brought with it a sense of security. Oh, how I wish I could feel like that again. I miss you and the relationship I wanted to have with you, Mom. Music played in the background, and a quiet knocking drew Cora's eyes to the door. Yes? I'm sorry to bother you, Cora, but we're about to begin. Are you okay? Can I get you something before you go back out there? Glancing quickly into the mirror, Cora caught a glimpse of her mother once again. Somehow, the familiar face she now saw in her own reflection reassured her that she'd never have to wonder if she belonged to her family. Her resemblance to her mother was something she could carry with her for the rest of her life. Cora, dear, is there anything I can get you before we begin? Laura Pennington's kind eyes watched from the doorway. No, thank you, though. I think I've found what I needed. Cora took a deep breath and turned and walked through the door, down a hallway. The organ played a soothing hymn, and the quiet murmuring of the people packing the room took her by surprise in a pleasant way. It was kind for so many of them to be there. Tears spilled down Cora's cheek as she dabbed a tissue to her eye. Ahead of her, draped across the top of a cherry wood casket, was a spray of lilacs and roses. Laura Pennington, wife of the funeral director, leaned near her and quietly spoke to Cora. The florist did a lovely job with the flowers, don't you think? I was told that lilacs and roses were among your mother's favorites, and I've never seen a spray quite like this one. Laura gave her hand a gentle squeeze and stepped away. Cora walked, almost as though in a dream, toward the front. Looking lovely, despite the ravages of cancer, lay her mother, Charlotte May Haskins. The smell of lilacs mingled with the roses, and the fragrance intensified as Cora approached. Looking down at this woman she loved, whom now she would see every time she looked in the mirror, Cora closed her eyes, smiled slightly, and whispered, This is how I will remember you, Mama. Your gentle spirit wasn't made for the cruel world you found yourself in. And I forgive you for all the times you weren't strong enough to save me. You're like lilacs and rose water, delicate and resolute in your own quiet way. The minister reached the podium, cleared his throat, and looked at Cora to see if she was ready to take her seat. Mary waited for her in the family pew. Embracing, they stared into each other's eyes, both understanding without saying a word. The lilacs and roses were lovely. Thank you for joining me for Into the Night, an anthology series written by Caroline Giamanco, narration and sound design by Nari Kwok, theme music by Nico Rodriguez, all original music and editing in part provided by Flyboy Entertainment. You can find our links in the show notes. Please remember to like and subscribe, and if you enjoy what you hear, please leave us a five-star review to help other excursionists to join us. You can find us on your favorite podcast directory. See you next time. And remember... Whether in the shadows or in the daylight, all twisted paths take you into the night. Into the Night is a Creative Typo Entertainment production.